So Nick, what are you trying to film here? Well, Mark, I'm currently filming a little tree squirrel. He's losing his marbles because we've got a young male leopard just lying at the base of the tree here. So this squirrel is just going off, alarm calling constantly. Leopard couldn't be too bothered. He's uh, just resting nicely in the shade. He's got himself a nice full belly. But yeah, the squirrel is not happy here. So Nick, why is this leopard doing a better impression of a carpet than the average Persian rag? <laughs> well Mike, uh, he looks pretty well fed. And it's, it's been a pretty warm day. So he has no obligations to do anything right now. Besides rest up and sleep. And uh, yeah, maybe a bit later, once it gets a bit cooler, he might get up and move about. Nick, both you and this leopard have been on Marlin Marlin now for about two years. Can you tell me a bit about his history and any siblings that he might have? Well, Mike, he's one of the sons of the Imsakweni female, um, who uh, she actually had three cubs to start off with. Um, unfortunately, she lost one of her cubs um, actually not too long after I started working here. Uh, but she did an incredible job at raising the two sons, the, the two males that she has, um, two independents. And uh, yeah, this 3-3 three, three son, that's his spot pattern. Alright, so as much as I am dying to make fun of Nick for this, um, I can't because I too have made the same mistake and I think so has almost every ranger. You arrive in an area, you find a leopard and you just assume that it's the leopard that's territorial there. Uh, yeah, it's normally a, yeah, eight out of 10 times you're right. But uh, in areas like this, Mala Mala and the Sabi Sands Game Reserve, where very high density of leopards, you can never assume anything. And uh, in this case, it was exactly that leopard, not this one, Nick, that one. Um, it's been quite interesting following him. He's moved quite far west of his original territory with his mother. Um, and we're actually starting to see him on a more regular basis. Um, I think we're all hoping that he's able to establish himself here on Mala Mala. Um, young male leopards can travel quite large distances away from their original birthplace. Uh, in search of, of territory where uh, there's maybe no competition from larger, more dominant male leopards. Um, for the time being, he seems to be going unchallenged in this area. Uh, maybe there's a bit of a void left from a male leopard and he's kind of slotted in here. And uh, yeah, he's become quite a, a regular here on Mala Mala. Um, and I think starting to become a, a favorite. So Nick, you refer to him as the 3-3 son of the Emsukweni female. Uh, what's the 3-3 and why does he not have his own name yet? Uh, the 3-3 is the identifying spot pattern which is typically um, just above the whiskers. Um, it's one of the easiest ways to identify uh, leopards is by identifying the spot pattern on the just above the whiskers. Um, he doesn't have his own name just yet because he hasn't established himself in, a, in an area or a, terri in, or a territory. Um, as I was saying, male leopards, young male leopards can travel quite a large distance from their birthplace. Uh, there is all possibility that he could actually move or leave Mala Mala. Um, so once he establishes himself, becomes territorial, um, then we will start to name him typically after something in that area. Um, wherever he sets up his territory. So that will still probably be another, I'd say, year to maybe two years before he establishes himself as a, as a male leopard, a dominant male leopard. Um, so for the time being, he's still referred to as the son of his mother, which is the Yimsehweni female. So Nick, you mentioned that he's got a brother and his mother still here. Do they see one another or are they also on uh, lockdown, no interactions? <laughs> uh, they are practicing quite a 
a lot of social distancing at the moment. Um, the mother at the moment doesn't really tolerate them around. Um, it's quite a, an aggressive confrontation when they do come together. She has cut all ties from them. Um, and same with the two brothers. They've actually gone in completely different directions. This son has come further west. Um, and it seems like the other son has gone further east. Um, which is very normal for, for leopards. Leopards are truly solitary animals. Um, and therefore they have kind of gone on, on their own. Um, he's more than capable of hunting on his own now, providing food for himself. Um, and yeah, his mother probably wouldn't tolerate him around anymore because she could potentially be looking to raise her next litter of cubs. Um, and she would not want him or his brother around at all. And the father who we still think might be the Asipata male, his interaction with his sons? Uh, if they do happen to come across each other, uh, it would probably be a very aggressive confrontation. The Asipata male being a very large dominant male um, would clearly have the size and strength uh, and a young male like this if he knows better, would probably back off and run away. Um, but potentially, if they do come together, his own father could kill him. So Nick, it seems even the beautiful calls of the squirrel couldn't keep this leopard here. Uh, why do you think he's moved off? Uh, Mark, it is getting a bit later in the afternoon, but I also think that potentially this constant chattering from the squirrel maybe started to irritate him a little bit. Um, and he decided to go find somewhere maybe a little bit more peaceful and a little bit more quiet to, to rest. So uh, I think we will be doing the same, letting him get his peace and quiet. And uh, I think that'll be a wrap for today. I uh, hope you enjoyed this episode and please stay safe. And remember to like and subscribe our YouTube channel. And yeah, if you have any requests or comments, please leave them uh, below.